Hey everybody, welcome back to GWN. I am Noctair, your host. So guys, this video has been a long time coming. This is a first look video at the Sneaky Archer. The Sneaky Archer has been around since the beginning of the game, obviously. And around Builder Hall 5, players started to use her for these mass Sneaky Archer attacks where they just trickle them in and they ate up the full three minutes on the clock. And that, that really is something that a lot of us have hated. But... It's a really good, strong attack strategy. Now, I got two replays for you. They're both kind of long. They're about uh, two and a half, three minutes long. Moist Succulent over at Oz Builders is uh, the attacker on this. And if you watch the way he does this, and I think this is this is the way these attacks pretty typically run. First, you work on the stuff around the outside. Now, some people, when they're first learning how to do this, they take a month of Tuesdays to run this initial outer ring attack, if you will. And uh, that's, that's why they end up with, like, you know, no stars or one stars or whatever. But the guys that are good at it, they hit it pretty quick and pretty hard. Um, the number of archers that you put on each one of the different buildings varies. And the idea is to get whatever the defense is down before the defense can start shooting at you during, during the time when you're cloaked. Now, when they nerfed the cloak, it made it a little bit harder to do, but it's still very doable. And again, watch as as he drops his archers, both the way he pads them as well as how many he drops on each one. And he dropped one at the top there to take out the apex of that apron, and that opens it up so that he can get down to the buildings that are right around the builder hall itself. In this particular version of the attack, what he likes to do is to use beta minions to come in at the very end and take out the Builder Hall for the second star. So he'll get all those other buildings that are all over around the outer perimeter, and then after he's got them down and a couple of key defenses that are gonna cause problems for the beta minions, he's gonna sweep in with the beta minions and finish off the Builder Hall to walk out with uh, a low to mid 70s uh, percent two star. And it works, it works really well. Notice that when he comes in with those beta minions, he's bringing them in a little at a time. Similar to what he does with the uh, sneaky archers. And the reason for that is you don't want to risk them getting taken out by something like that roaster or the air bombs and not being able to get the builder hall down. Once the builder hall's down, then, you know, do whatever you got to do. Don't worry about it. You're good. And you'll see he takes out that cannon on the left there. And uh, I think that's the end of this attack. Yeah, the end of this one. It's... It works really, really very well. Now, in the next attack, same base design, but a different player he's going up against. Uh, things moved around a little bit. Like, for example, that roaster has been moved down to the middle. He's going to do similar, but not quite the same. And this is, again, the mark of a better player, of a stronger player at the game. He shifts his, um, his attacking army composition to include one army camp of cannon carts. So coming in from the top, he's going to bust in through the uh, apron there to create another point of ingress for his troops to get to the stuff that's at the top. Because again, at the end of this particular attack, he wants to bring in his uh, beta minions to take out that builder hall. Uh, a little lucky in this case that he doesn't have the second archer tower to deal with, but it doesn't really make that big of a difference. The reality is the attack runs roughly the same. And his, uh, his cannon carts come down and take out a few of those periphery defenses as well. And now it's time to bring in the sneaky archers. Again, trickling them in a little at a time here and there. Uh, taking out primarily his first shots are going to be against the cannons, the double cannons, and the archer towers. And for that, he drops three. For the hidden Teslas and firecrackers, two. Army camps, you can get away with one. Collectors are typically two. And then when you start talking about the key defenses, the Crusher, the Giant Cannon, uh, Roaster, Multi-Mortar, the Mega Tesla, the Air Bombs, it kind of depends on the layout. You can get away with three or four, depending upon whether it's a level seven or eight versus, say, you know, the level 16 uh, Sneaky Archer, and just how it's positioned. If you can get a few extra seconds for your your archers to fire on something, then you can go ahead and just drop, say, two or three, 
and you'll be just fine. And the reality is anything that can't attack your archers and doesn't have the overarching uh, envelope uh, target area of another defense, you can get away with just one of the archers to take it down. Okay, so I mean it's 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 a matter of analyzing the base and figuring out exactly what you need, how many archers you're going to need for each one of the buildings. And then of course keeping your eye on the timer so you don't run out of time at the end of the attack. And here you can see he got another win out of a 77% two star. So that's our first look at Sneaky Archers. I'll have another video here in the next week or two where we'll break it down a little bit more and look at some uh, some more attacks. Whether you do it with all Sneaky Archers or you throw in some beta minions or even some cannon carts. Uh, sometimes people use wall breakers. That's the general gist of it. Thanks a lot for sticking around to the end of the video. Hope you found it useful. Comments down below. Uh, drop me an email, nocturgmail.com. Pound a like, hit the subscribe. I'll be back in the very near future with more builder base and home village content. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.